Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I want to talk to you about an issue that affects a lot of us, as well as the food and cosmetics industries in particular, and that is palm and palm oil derivatives. Now I know there's a lot of viewers out there that are very passionate about this subject, so I would ask before commenting, please watch out the full video. There's a lot of information I'm going to present. And of course, if you want any further information from this video that I present, please contact us. We're happy to share you the resources, the links and the information that I provide in this video as examples. So first of all, let's talk about what is this issue with palm oil? The biggest issue is the amount of deforestation and impact this has on our environment and some endangered animal species. Animal species in general, but the endangered ones in particular. So there's a really bad side to the palm oil industry. But what a lot of people don't realize is just how much palm oil gets used, especially in foods. The cosmetic industry seems to wear a lot of the blame. And even then, a lot of consumers aren't aware just how extensively palm oil and palm oil derivatives are used in personal care. As an example, about 72% of all palm oil that's produced gets used in foods. So there's every likelihood you're probably consuming a much larger amount of palm oil than you're currently aware of. And you might see this on packaging as vegetable oil or vegetable gum or vegetable emulsifiers or other names similar to that. They don't need to declare that it's palm. Now in household and personal care, so I wanna point out it's not just all personal care, but household cleaning products as well, palm oil and its derivatives does still get used quite extensively. So at this point, you're probably saying, well, why? Why do we need to use palm oil in the first place? Well, basically palm oil and coconut oil contain a lot of short chain fatty acids in the oil. And we can use these short chain fatty acids and cut them, hydrogenate them, esterify them, manipulate them in many, many different ways. Because they're short chain, they can be manipulated to create a lot of other useful materials. But the problem of course is in the sourcing and it still results in that deforestation and impact on the environment and animal species. So one of the things I want you to think about first of all is if we're not using palm oil, what else could we be using? Because of the short fatty acid chain profile that we get from palm oil, we can't necessarily get this same type of fatty acid chain from other oils easily. And I did mention coconut already, so I wanna point out for example, if we switch from using all palm oil to coconut oil, are we then going to have the same or potentially bigger problems from sourcing coconut oil in large quantities and the impacts that will also have on environments and animal species? And if we don't use palm oil and we don't use coconut oil, then what's our other choices? Well, a lot of those fatty acid chains simply aren't as short or can't regrow as fast or aren't able to be manipulated to create the wide variety of materials that we need to create our personal care products. And in any case, even if we do start to source from other plant sources, what environment or ecological impact are those sources and that excess farming going to have on our environment and other animal species as well? In other words, we need to get these fatty acids from somewhere. And we certainly don't wanna rely just on mineral oil sources, which are totally non-sustainable. So we need to get them from plant sources somewhere. So what's a possible option? Well, first of all, I want you to be aware of just how many products contain palm oil or palm oil derivatives. So if we look at a library of materials as an example, and we remove all synthetically sourced materials from this library, you'll still see we have quite a big choice of materials that we can use for our formulas using natural and naturally derived materials. Now, if I remove all of the materials containing palm or a palm oil derivative, you'll see this has a really big impact on the amount of materials that I can use in my formulations and development. 
and in some cases there may not be great alternatives to use from other plant sources. In other words, the product that I could produce simply may not perform as well as I'd like it to to please my consumer group. But if we use sustainably sourced palm oil, we then have a much bigger choice of materials to choose from. And in fact, it's the sustainably sourced materials that I wanna to talk to you about now. Now there's a lot of controversy about how sustainable is it really? And when you have an RSPO or mass balance certified material or product made from those materials, you know that at least 50% of the palm oil and palm oil derivatives in that product are from sustainable sources. They're certified, so regardless of what misinformation you see on the internet about it potentially not being traceable, to be certified, these companies must show full traceability for at least 50% of the palm oil and palm oil derivatives in that product. In other words, it's a brand or a logo or a statement that you need to trust because they need to be certified and they need to demonstrate traceability to the source for at least 50% of that palm oil content. Now, some of you are probably sitting there saying, hey, Belinda, that's not enough of a solution. And on the surface of it, I'd agree with you, but come back to the original problem. If we don't use palm oil, what are we going to use? The fact is industry and the supply chain is aware of the palm oil issue. If we switch to coconut, we don't have the same sort of traceability or certifications in place. If we switch to corn or soy, the same sort of traceability and responsibility for sustainable sourcing is not in place, but it is in place with palm. So we should ask our suppliers and producers to use RSPO and mass balance where possible. Now again, you might be saying this isn't enough, but let me show you a couple of formulation examples to show you just how little palm oil we use in typical cosmetic products, both on a formulation basis and a daily basis, especially if we switch to RSPO or mass balance sources you'll see there's very little palm oil in our daily use that is not fully traceable and sustainable if we put pressure on our suppliers and industry to make sure they're RSPO certified or provide mass balance certification. Now on the screen, I've got an example of a typical basic natural cream. I'm going to use this in talking you through exactly how much palm oil derivatives and potentially mass balance sources could be used in personal care products. So it's a really basic formula and you'll see that I've used mass balance sources for my emulsifiers and for one of the oils or lipids in this formulation. Where we can go palm free, I've done that too with the glycerin and you need to be careful about your vitamin E sources. Some may be from palm sources while others may not. So in this formula, you can see that there is 16% from possible palm inputs. If I require my supplier to provide me with RSPO or mass balance materials, that brings that down to a maximum 8% non-certifiable palm sources. I also wanna draw your attention to the fact that there's 74.2% water in this formula and water and its sustainability is another really big problem. So from this formula, there would be a maximum of 8% non-sustainably sourced palm oil. In reality, it's probably lower than this because the emulsifiers are not totally from palm only. But I'm using this maximum 8% to show you it's not a big number. Now, if I was using two grams of this cream on my face, a typical application, that would equate to 0.16 grams, or as much oil as you see in this dropper, from non-sustainable palm sources. That's equivalent to 0.005 fluid ounces. It's not a great deal. Let me talk you through another example. I have on the screen an example of a typical natural surfactant. And again, I'm using quite average cases here to demonstrate average inputs of materials that we'd use and their relative palm oil inputs. 
Now in this formula, you'll see I've listed out some different types of surfactants. Remember that a big portion of these surfactants is still water. So a big portion of this formula is still water. Another material we have to be very careful about our use of. But if you look at this formula and the actual proportions of surfactants present, means that there's a total of 14.2% palm oil sourced materials at its maximum which means at the very maximum input, there is 7.1% of non-sustainably sourced palm oil derivatives in this formula. Again, the actual content is likely to be lower than this because the surfactants are not totally palm sourced. But I'm using this figure as a bit of an outsider or height example so that you can see the maximum is still very low. Now, if I was using five mil of this product in the shower, I would be using 0.36 mil of non-sustainable palm oil. It's about this much that I'd be using in this formula on a daily basis when using this product from non-sustainable sources. This equates to about 0.012 fluid ounces. At this point, you might say, but hang on, Belinda, what if I'm using my face cream, my face wash, my body wash, my body lotion, my shampoo, my conditioner, even my makeup and my makeup remover, as well as my deodorant or antiperspirant? How much palm oil would I be using then? Well, you can see on the screen, I've calculated some typical inputs of non-sustainably sourced palm oil and typical uses and typical input rates for each of these product and formulation types. Again, it would vary by individual formulas and the actual brands you were using, but these are typical examples to show you a relative worst case scenario. In reality, it's likely to be lower than the figures I've shown on the screen, but I wanna make sure I'm giving you a pretty realistic example and a maximum case scenario to cover most of your situations. So the sum total from all use of all your products every day would equate to around 2.85 grams of non-sustainably sourced palm oil. That's a little over a half a teaspoon of oil, or what I'm showing you here. In other words, it's not a great deal compared to the amount of water or other materials that we're also using in the formulation. I'm explaining this to you because I want to put it into perspective so that you can see using RSPO or mass balance materials not only gives the chemist quite a big scope of choice to deliver you some fantastic products with great performance, but also helps respect our environment and those animal species that are otherwise affected by non-sustainable sourcing for the entire content of the palm and palm oil derivatives. Just a reminder, there's so much more palm oil being consumed in food every day. It's certainly going to exceed the half a teaspoon of non-sustainably sourced palm oil that you're potentially using in your personal care every day. So on the screen, you'll see an example list of many of the inky names of palm oil and palm oil derivatives. This is by no means exhaustive. And we are seeing suppliers come out with more and more RSPO and mass balance alternatives all the time. We are seeing some suppliers come out with palm oil free alternatives, but the amount of palm oil free alternatives still doesn't give formulators a lot of choice when it comes to innovation, high performance, and fantastic products that consumers want. So while we might have ideals of going entirely palm free, you may not be able to achieve this. So I want to encourage you to consider the amount of palm oil that we actually use in personal care and the non-sustainable sources if we put pressure on brands to instead show us that they're using mass balance and RSPO materials where possible and going palm free on their choices where possible as well. Remember when we take from one ecosystem and move to another, the other ecosystem is going to suffer. At least with Palm, we have traceability, we are aware of the issue, and industry is doing something about it. I'd encourage you to ask your brand and your suppliers to use RSPO and mass balance where possible. And then let's put pressure on brands and suppliers to use more of those mass balance products to reduce the non-sustainably sourced palm oil in our products that we use every day. I know it's not an issue that is just going to go away. And we certainly can't go palm free in all our formulation types because the alternative palm free materials to replace them simply don't exist. And even if they do, are we then going to be putting pressure on another supply chain with similar consequences? 
Remember, you can contact us for all of this information and then you can go out and conduct your own research and speak to your suppliers and organisations further. I hope you found this video informative on what is a very controversial topic and something I'm seeing a lot of brands have a lot of responsibility for, but maybe the message just isn't getting out to the larger population as effectively as we'd like. Please give the video a thumbs up, please have any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!